हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल जर्नी विथ विजय कुमार श्रीवास्तव टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट द टॉपिक विंड ब्रेक्स एंड सेल्टर बेल्ट्स बिफोर प्रेजेंटेशन आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस माय सेल्फ आई एम विजय कुमार श्रीवास्तव आई हैव डन एम एस एग्रीकल्चर विथ स्पेशल इकोनॉमी फ्रॉम जी बी पंत यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ एग्रीकल्चर एंड टेक्नोलॉजी पंत नगर इन नाइनटीन एंड प्रेजेंटली वर्किंग एज ए सीड प्रोफेशनल इन वन ऑफ द एम एसोसिएटेड विथ सीड्स एंड पेस्टिसाइड सो लेट्स प्रोसीड टू द प्रेजेंटेशन विंड ब्रेक्स आर सर्च स्ट्रक्चर्स विच ब्रेक द विंड फ्लो and reduce wind speed while shelter belts are rows of trees or shrubs planted for protection of crop against wind a row of trees and shrubs planted across the wind direction is the most effective the wind break reduces the wind speed on the leeward side at 200 meter away up to 20% shelter belts are the belts or blocks consisting of several rows of tree established at right angles to the prevailing wind and the purpose of shelter belts are first to deflect air currents second to reduce the velocity of winds and third to provide general protection to the leeward areas against the effect of wind erosion and fourth to protect the leeward areas from desiccating effects of hot winds and fifth to provide fuel fodder timber etc shelter belts are extensively used in agriculture and for some general public use their most common uses are apparent as wind breaks seen providing some shelter to housing in open areas rows of tree dissipate and divert the flow of wind from whatever direction the trees are from the house reduction of wind for housing is most necessary during the winter to reduce heat loss from cold winds blowing past the walls of a dwelling in this picture we can show the wind velocity is 30 miles per hour and after the interference of shelter belts the speed is going down to 10 miles per hour in downwards the speed is reduced up to 5 miles per hour only because of this there will be less damage to the crops and houses in preview of that affected belts here we have shown the picture regarding cross section of a 10 row shelter belts here we are using the first row of shrubs first and second line after that there are a small trees rows third and fourth then there are large trees for fifth and sixth rows and after that there are wild life areas and evergreen plants hedges from seven to tenth row so when when whenever there will be wind blow the shelter belts will interfere and they will work as a barrier and after that the air will move upwards and slowly there will be reduction in wind velocity and speed now to study the main characteristics of shelter belts first one is shape and composition shelter belts have a typical triangular shape this can usually be brought about by raising tall trees in the center the shelter belts are of two types first one is shelter belt leg 1 and second is shelter bag leg 2 increasing shelter belt leg length will increase the protected zone in areas with variable winds multiple leg shelter belts or shelter belt systems provide greater protection to the field or farmyard than single leg shelter belts second characteristic is density and width a certain degree of penetration by winds is planned as by raising a solid wall the protection decreases very fast on the leeward side shelter belts up to 50 meter width are considered ideal under indian conditions after that third is height and spacing the ratio of height and width should be roughly 1 to 10 however this figure may vary depending on local conditions here we have shown the picture in which we can see if the shelter belts height is 10 meters in such cases the length should be 100 meters means there is ratio should be 1 to 10 fourth characteristic is orientation orientation of shelter belts depends on the direction and velocity of prevailing winds shelter belts may be raised in quadrangles if the wind direction tend to change very often fifth characteristic is length length is an important consideration as far as shelter belts are concerned the minimum length of a shelter belt should be about 25 times its height sixth characteristic is choice of species 
In case of shelter belts, there are different species which are recommended to use as a shelter belt. These are of three types. First one is grasses, second is shrubs and third is trees. Under grasses like Sacrum spontaneum, S. munja, Penicum entodatel, etc. While in case of shrubs, there are Calotropis procera, Cassia auriculata and Deduina viscosa. These are the crops which are used as a shelter belt. While in case of trees, there are different species like Acacia arabica, Acacia leucocephalia, Debergia sisu, etc. These are the eucalyptus species. So these are the different types of species under grasses, shrubs and trees used as shelter belts. Wind bricks comprise one or more rows of trees or shrubs of different heights placed perpendicular to the prevailing wind direction to protect fields, homes, canals or other areas from wind and blowing soil or sand. Wind breaks have a huge number of benefits for all kinds of farming and landscape rehabilitation activities. A strong winds are incredibly drying and literally suck moisture out of the soil, plant and trees, animals and people. Field measurements are reported of the effect of different mulches on microclimatic conditions and biomass production. The trees increase the economic value of a property and improve the aesthetics of the landscape. They also favor biodiversity and reduce the pressure on the forests, improve microclimate of the crops and influence dry matter production. A well-designed windbreak slows the wind speed and guarantees faster and better growth of crops, orchards and livestock. Here we will study the impact of wind breaks to the wind velocity. Depending on the effectiveness of the barrier, reduction in wind velocity can occur for a distance up to 20 times its height. Here we will see from the wind breaks up to distance of 20 times, the wind velocity is existing only 70 to 80 percent to the original. So there is reduction in wind velocity from 20 to 30 percent while in case from wind breaks to the distance of 8 to 10 times distance to the height the wind velocity is existing only 50 to 70 percent means there is reduction of 50 to 30 percent and again in from wind breaks to 8th time distance to, to the height the original wind velocity is existing only 25 to 50 percent means there is reduction of velocity from 50 to 75 percent. While in case of windward side, the from which side the wind is moving, the wind velocity is 80 to 90 percent means because of wind breaks in windward side also there is reduction 10 to 20 percent. Now here we will study the purpose of raising wind breaks. First one is to protect field crops, livestock from cold and hot winds. Second to prevent soil erosion. Third to provide habitat for wildlife. And fourth to reduce evaporation from farmlands. Fifth to improve the microclimate for growing crops and to shelter people and livestock. And sixth to retard grass fire. 7th for fencing and boundary demarcation and 8th for productive role like producing fuel, fodder, fiber etc. Benefits of wind breaks Wind breaks form efficient soil protection against wind erosion particularly at the time when soil cover is not protected by the cultivated plant vegetation cover. A strong winds may cause 70 to 100 percent of a crop to be lost or damaged because of high wind velocity, especially in case of bananas, sugarcane, vegetables and fruit trees which are very sensitive to wind damage. Wind breaks may reduce wind speed by 60 to 80 percent and save the crop, protect the crop up to significant level. Other benefits include the generation of a favorable microclimate for plant development and the reduction of wind erosion. Here we have shown the picture in which we can see when the wind velocity as speed is 35 miles per hour in windward side because of wind breaks interference in leeward side the speed will go down to 15 to 20 miles per hour. 
so there is great reduction in speed which will protect the crops and houses and plantations up to significant level and minimize the damage when properly designed and maintained wind breaks reduce the speed of the wind and thus its ability to carry and deposit soil and sand they also improve growing conditions by decreasing water evaporation from soil and plants and can be used to reduce evaporation from water surfaces such as irrigation ponds canals or streams in addition wind breaks can provide wide range of useful products from poles and fuel wood to fruit fodder fiber and mulch now to study characteristics of wind breaks first one is permeability a wind break works by filtering and breaking the force of the wind for most purposes permeable wind breaks which allow some wind to pass through are the most suitable the slight movement of air through the wind breaks forms a cushion of slow moving air on both upwind and downwind sides this deflects the main volume of wind upwards and prevents it from descending for some distance thus the wind velocity in the protected area may be reduced to between 25 and 75% of the wind speed dense wind breaks produce a small area of still air in a narrow strip behind the trees but further downwind there may be considerable turbulence however dense wind breaks may be desirable when a high level of protection is needed for a small areas such as around home streets and work areas or for vulnerable livestock such as newborn lambs calves etc the desired permeability can be obtained by carefully selecting tree shrubs or species a species such as eucalyptus and casuarina will form l wind breaks but most native species are more permeable second characteristics is orientation for best results plant wind breaks at right angles to winds from which protection is needed wind breaks planted north south are a good compromise as they provide protection from winds coming from the western quarter they also give better shading of adjacent crops and pastures than wind breaks planted east west third is height the wind break height determines the size of the sheltered area the taller the wind break the greater the area is protects on level ground a wind break will reduce the speed of wind for about 25 times the tree height on downwind side maximum reduction of wind speed is in the area 5 to 15 times the tree height away from the wind break on the upwind side some protection is gained up to a distance of 5 times the tree height away from the wind break thus a wind break 20 meter tall will give some protection from 100 meter on the upwind side to 500 meter on the downwind side fourth characteristic is length wind breaks are most effective when they stretch without major gaps for distance exceeding 12 times the mature height of the trees and fifth characteristic is number of rows a single row wind break should be used only where land is so valuable that only a small amount of space can be spared for tree planting if a single row wind break is to be planted tree species that retain their foliage to the ground and give a fairly dense growth should be selected eucalyptus are generally unsuitable as single row wind breaks because of their habit of losing their lower limbs the main disadvantage of a single row is that if one tree is lost gap is created which reduces the efficiency of the entire wind break wind breaks of 3 to 5 rows are most effective for most farm situation and are less affected by gaps caused by mission trees tall growing species should be planted in the center rows and a small bushy species in the outside rows sixth characteristic is tree spacing distance between trees varies with the relative importance of the protective versus productive purposes of the wind break where the products of wind breaks have a high priority then land users may favor greater number of shorter strips and a higher proportion of small trees and shrubs 
which provides products such as fodder and fuel wood if the by product is timber the height of wind breaks and the intervals between them can be increased when the interest is to protect valuable crops the wind breaks should be as tall and as far apart as possible to obtain the more protection in dry areas individual plants should be widely spaced so that they do not compete with each other for the available soil moisture seventh is gaps gaps are required for gates and tracks but because of the funneling effect through gaps wind velocity in these areas can be substantially increased in multi row wind breaks this can be eliminated by angling the gap at about 45 degrees to the prevailing wind direction alternatively a few plant trees or shrubs can be used on either side of the gate or track to broaden the gap and reduce the funneling effect other solutions are to plant five or six trees at angle to the main belt as a wind or or to plant a second short row to cover the gaps and seventh characteristic is species in general trees with narrow vertical growth are ideal for wind breaks to minimize the land removed from crop production some fast growing species should be used to establish the desired effect as rapidly as possible some of the tree species used for wind breaks are eucalyptus cassia prosopis lucena kejurina acacia grevillea sigegium dalbergia etc tenth characteristics of wind breaks soil conservation hedges trees can be planted on physical soil conservation works like grass strips bunds risers and terraces wherein they play two roles to stabilize the structure and to make productive use of the land they occupy stabilization is through the root system in some of sloping landscapes of the country the risers or terraces are densely planted with trees with multiple use being made of them for fruit fodder and fuel wood in this system the major groups of components are multipurpose and trees and common agricultural species the primary role of multipurpose tree and agricultural species is soil conservation and provision of various tree products the following trees species are used for soil conservation like grevillea robusta acacia catechu pinus rocks vergai acacia modesta prosopis julifera elenas nepalensis and luciana leucocephala etc so this was all about wind breaks and shelter belts hope this presentation will be very very useful to all of you now my presentation in share thank you very much i have given here my youtube channel details journey with vijay kumar srivastava having request please visit the channel subscribe it and provide your kind and valuable feedback thank you